welcome to another episode of Backlog Weekend, the show where we take a look at my backlog, take the whole weekend, pick one project, and try to finish the entire kit. So for you few people who have been watching the show since day one, you may have noticed that my backlog looks kind of different compared to the previous episodes. Well, that's because this is my commissions backlog. These are the backlogs I've had that other people have made me do and paint for them. This is not just the only commissions that I have. I actually have an entire elder army and this is just a portion of that. And you can see it through like little baggies of built models here. I think there's some more sprues with little boxes inside this brown bag. And there you go, if you can see those sprues. This giant figure that I have yet to figure out on how to paint. As a commission artist, I have a lot of work, which is a good problem to have. Don't fret clients. Part of the reason why I have this show is to get rid of my backlog and I've dedicated this single episode to take care of at least one kit from my growing commission backlog. And that lucky kit is the Sector Imperialis Sector. Now, sadly enough, this may be the first episode of Backlog Weekend where I have not finished a kit and where I have failed because time check, it is around quarter to 12. The following day is a weekday, therefore I have failed officially. To give you guys a glimpse of what I've been working on and you guys might be familiar with this kit, this is the progress of what we've had with this sanctum and I'll be showing some photos of how it looks so far. I've just gotten them so far as to the base coats of the thing. I'm not even done with the base coats is the problem and I was so excited to show you guys this video because in this video is where I feature how I use my mystery jar and in this mystery jar it's just a bunch of leftover wash, leftover paint, just excess stuff from my wet palette or my dry palette that I haven't used over and I poured it here and I saved this mystery wash for big projects like that. Unfortunately, I won't be showing that in this video but at least I'll be showing you guys what I accomplished in this weekend. Just a little advice for people who are trying to do the same thing that I'm doing. One, don't underestimate terrain. There's a lot of things to base coat and two, plan your weekends ahead. <laughs> I may have overspent hanging out with a few friends far longer than I had intended and it sort of ate up a lot of my time. Whenever I'm building a commission, it's always a matter of efficiency. While of course, I do love to paint, I do love painting miniatures and all these kits for myself, painting for other people has a different type of satisfaction. The main objective of course is to make the client happy while making sure the effort and the time I put is very much proportional to the compensation I get. It's a very tricky thing to navigate with other people, but I'm thinking of making an episode about it in the future. So you can see that I have two types of pliers. I use my broken busted up pliers for pieces and bits that I can detach where I don't need as much precision so that my good pair of pliers doesn't get used up as often because we want to keep your good pair really sharp and precise. And speaking of sharp and precise, if anyone knows how to fix these types of Vallejo pliers, do let me know because for some reason, the elasticity or the stretchiness of this metal has lost it and it's no longer springing back into shape. So I really just have to manually open the pliers every now and then. When it comes to cleaning off pieces of the sprue, I always take it into three steps. The nail clippers, which is an unusual tool, but I use that to really clip off the nubs in a very precise way without harming the actual plastic bit. Those are designed to protect our nails, so maybe they could be used to protect our models. Then I take my knife, I just use a regular blade and scrape off any of the excess plastic as you normally would. And then I have various sanding sticks and other nail filers as well for cleaning up. So for some reason, uh, nail care is really good for cleaning up your plastic bits as well. In some instances, you'll see me even sanding the bottom part of the building and as well as the parts that need to adhere to one another. And the reason why I do that is this is a speed build. When the two surfaces are rough, it's easier for it to adhere to when you add some glue. And while the bottom part I sand, it's, it's terrain. 
I sand it evenly as flat as I could so that when you rest it on the flat, on the flat surface, there's no irregularness and that it sits flat on the ground. My favorite tools when it comes to building is Tamiya liquid cement. Now some of you or maybe a majority of you already use this or have heard of this, but besides it being glue, there's a lot of uses to this tool. One thing I guess that I would like to remind or practice when using this is this is glue that flows a lot. So I don't normally tend to hold the piece that has the glue on it. I normally just hold the piece that's dry and then I put the glue on the piece I'm not holding and then lay on the dry piece on that. And that way, I'm not moving about the piece or the plastic that has the glue so that the glue doesn't spill onto my hands and that the glue doesn't deform any of these of the plastic that I'm holding. Because you see, to me, liquid cement melts plastic. And imagine you holding a piece of plastic, tilting the piece a bit, and the liquid cement falls in between your thumbs and the plastic, and then your plastic suddenly gets an imprint of your thumb or fingerprint. And that's because, to me, a liquid cement probably melted the plastic a bit, and then got the fingerprint on your plastic. If that's something you want on your model, go ahead, do it. Now, because the cement or adhesive melts the two pieces together, make sure you dry fit. It may be extremely difficult to reverse this type of glue or binding. And because it does melt glue, it's also a good way to smoothen rough edges that you may not have sanded properly or it may be good to melt off small seam lines that aren't protruding enough. And that's the beauty of this cement. It melts plastic. It makes you mold your bits and pieces a little bit more easier than a hobby knife would. Then once the two pieces are adhered to one another, you also want to take the chance to take the cement again and drip the glue or brush the cement on the seam lines or seams just to really melt those two areas together and really remove any evidence that there was and that those two pieces were glued to in the first place. Now there's a strange bit in this kit. I find it odd because I guess they want us to customize the kit. I don't know, it's just my first time seeing this type of thing in a, in a GW kit. But there are these two bits of arches that you have to quote unquote kit bash. And I'm, I'm wondering why that bit is left off that way. Maybe there's a way to build it, whereas you don't have to cut the top part. But in this case, I used the hobby saw, which is another Tamiya product. And the hobby saw is one of the things that was gifted to me by a friend. And it's been one of my favorite tools to use. Because when you use it, you really get a smooth cut. And sanding becomes a lot easier down the line. When you're building this kit or a kit like this, the wall sections can be quite um, cumbersome to how large they are. So my advice is to build them in sections instead of building the walls on top of each other. Meaning if there's four sections of walls, connect the two walls first. So you have two parts of two pieces each and then connect those two parts together as opposed to having four parts connecting the second to the first and the third to that big part and then you have a giant piece of wall that you're trying to balance and connect to the fourth wall. So always build them in groups which makes it easier to manage when you're building the entire whole thing. While this video is not sponsored, I am commissioned by a client who owns a company called Moon Farm. Moon Farm is a co-working space in Ortigas, one of the financial business districts here in the Philippines. And in that co-working space, they also have a small gaming community where a lot of them play tabletop RPGs and Warhammer 40K. So this piece of terrain that I just showed you will be and should be used in the up-and-coming tournament in the next month or so. So if you find yourself in the Philippines, look up Moon Farm, it's a new place. I haven't played there myself, but I'd be very much interested to see how it goes. And hopefully you might see this thing in person completed, done, and ready for the tabletop. And I guess if you want to paint this kit a lot faster than me, you want to sort of build this in sub-assemblies because I did have a hard time painting the enclosed area because my table isn't as large, if you can see. So it made it very difficult for me to maneuver this giant building and paint around it. At the same time, if I had to paint like the insides of the walls of this little room, it was quite difficult to do when it was all together. So I may recommend like sub-assembling this part. Also helps to use your flat surface to make sure you're gluing things in the right angles because this is a square building. You want to make sure that you are not 
misaligning any of the tiles. The moment you misalign the tiles of this, this kit, it will be difficult to fit the second floor on top of the bottom and it might not seem like it's straight when you don't get these properly fit together. Now for the roofs, I actually flipped the entire model upside down because I was building this thing ground up and I was gluing just the top parts of the roof and just to add more security I flipped the whole thing and then added glue on the ceiling side because this is a gaming piece it's meant to take a beating and that's why I used liquid Tamiya cement so that at the end of this project it's a giant piece of plastic melted together as opposed to just Lots of bits and pieces held together by brittle super glue. And as you can already see Intel, I didn't glue the second half or second floor of this kit so that players could have some customizability with the different styles and ways they could build their terrain. Now before I went to painting, I took my Tamiya liquid cement again just to make sure and go over the areas that still had some rough patches and it still had some seam lines. That's the best way to smooth it out. Especially you can see here the buttresses are made. It may be difficult for me to get in some areas to, to sand down. So I just went in with my liquid Tamiya cement and sanded that together. Or rather melted that down to a smoother surface. So the paint scheme is actually very very simple. The client wanted it a little bit grim dark and it is terrain. So I am able to take some liberties with it and not be as strict as to follow the box art or a specific pen. Even though I did not finish it, I will link the entire paint scheme down below. The weathering and the highlighting will also be in the bottom. Now when you get the painting, I like to wear gloves or I put the glove on my right hand which is the hand that will be holding the model. A kit like this doesn't really give any liberties for a paint handle, so you really are forced to hold it. Some other hobbyists use a cake stand or a cake spinner. It's just a cake stand that, that moves around like a lazy Susan and it holds the giant model for you. But in my case, I just had my hand and there is a chance that my hand could sweat or my hand has oils that could ruin the paint that has officially cured. If you plan to get gloves like these, these are latex examination gloves that are powder free and are not sterile. So you don't want any chemicals on that rubber because you're just eliminating the point of putting on gloves if there are chemicals over there. In the base coat phase, if you make a mistake or if I made a mistake, it was fine. And this was also terrain. So terrain has to look good. It has to complement the battlefield. It has to complement the miniatures. But I always believe that terrain or great looking terrain should never outshine the miniatures that you're playing with. I do see a lot of really great terrain. So it, it puts a lot of pressure to put miniatures next to it that look just as good. I really was planning to not be as detailed as I would in a regular mini but apply a lot of effects and weathering and dry brushing to really bring out the ruggedness or the destruction that this building has felt. And my plan is to show you guys that in the next episode. If ever you're in the Philippines, besides just checking out Moon Farm, hit me up. I'd be glad to show you around the other miniature wargaming clubs if they're open during this time. I really love Backlog Weekend because it's a great way for me to hit two birds with one stone. I'm slowly falling in love with the idea of owning a hobby channel on YouTube, but still in love with our miniature hobby. And those two things take up each other's times, and this for me is the best way to merge those two schedules and have progress in both areas. The beauty about our hobby, or any hobby for that matter, is that we find the time for it. No matter how busy we are, no matter how hectic life gets, if we love something, we find the time to do it or we find a way to make time for it. And Backlog Weekend is my way of doing it. And if you guys look at your backlog, you guys look at your miniatures, you guys assess your love for the scale hobby, I'm sure you will find a way to be able to paint every day or paint some time or make time just to build and paint what you love doing. So I hope you enjoyed somehow the show or this episode and uh, I hope you got some benefit from it even if I didn't show you a complete model and I hope to show you the rest of the completed model in the next episode. Thank you guys for watching. If you subscribe you'll get to see this backlog shrink 
and enlarge or you maybe get to see my personal backlog shrink and enlarge as well because we know we're never going to get rid of our backlog but having a backlog is just such a wonderful part of the hobby altogether and you should never be ashamed of the backlog that you have because if you have a backlog it just means you just have lots of things to do in the future. My name is Louis of Louis Loves Mini. It's reminding you to hobby every day to keep the spruce away.